Now, what book are we in? The book of Genesis. Brother Larry, who wrote the book of Genesis? God wrote it. It's exactly right. God wrote it. Okay, Brother Charlie, would you pray for us, please? Father, help us this morning as we study your word. Thank you for it. I pray you bless Brother Rick. Understand as we break the bread of life to people. Thank you for our Savior. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen. And Dennis, Brother Larry didn't get one. Okay. Okay. I'll get right. Now, on that outline, now everyone should have one now. Uh, how many big divisions in the book of Genesis? We're looking for two P words here. How many divisions? Two. Two. I already wrote out two P words. Okay, what's the first P word? Plenary. What's plenary mean? All. All things. What's chapters one and two about? The creation of all things. Where are we today? We're going to try to start chapter three. That'll be the corruption of all things. And then what's the second P word? The patriarchs. Who's the first one? Abraham and Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat Joseph, our hero. Joseph the Savior. Joseph the Savior is right. Okay, well let's, uh, let's review a little bit. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So, God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and male created he them. No? That's not what yours says? Let's try it again. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Female and female created he them. No, that's not it. No, you're exactly right. God set made a male and female, and like the preacher said last week, that's what God blessed in verse 28. And God blessed them, and that's all he can bless. And a lot of people's interested in the will of God. And we'll go ahead and tell you, right here is the will of God for your life. A male and a female. A lot of you might be doing a lot better than you think you are. You might be closer than you thought you was. If you think about it a little bit. I think everybody in here would be. Okay, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That's what the Word of God says. And God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. That's the first command in chapter 1. And man is so rebellious that he's getting away, farther and farther away from the first command in chapter 1. Well, let's look at chapter 2 at the second command. We'll tell you the truth. We're not going much better than it. Chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Work is not part of the curse. God gave them jobs right here before the fall. Work is a blessing. Work is a privilege. It's a, don't ever punish your children by making them work. Give them work as a reward. As a reward. Yeah. That's what God did right here. Work's a reward. It's a reward if you can get up in the morning and go to work. That's a reward. God made man to work. He gave us hands to work with he expects us to work. Man's not doing much better on the second command than he is on the first command. You'd help me out if you would uh, read the rest of the chapter. Let's start in verse 16, go around the room two verses at a time, and finish chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You have the tree of the garden, thou mayest the tree of evil. But I have the tree of knowledge, good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt be sure as thou. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help me for him. And the Lord God
shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. <coughs> Therefore shall man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. <coughs> That's right, amen. Chapter 3. Now, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Let's look and see who the serpent is. Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, charge. Who could find it? The Okay, we know this is the devil right here. Now, uh, the devil falls through heaven. The devil, Lucifer, was a created being, and he was in heaven with God until pride was, pride was found in him, and he fell. He got kicked out of heaven to the earth. It happens between chapter 2 and chapter 3. Let's read some verses about it. Let's start in Isaiah 14. I'll read. These are kind of long. Isaiah 14. This will tell the whole story. We tie these verses together here, starting in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? We get a witness right there. Our nation is weak, and the devil's doing it. For thou hast said in thine heart, I. Now down through here, he's going to say, I, I, I. It's the middle letter in pride. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He wanted to be like God. Yet God says, thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. That's who the serpent is. Let's look at it in Ezekiel 28. He gets kicked out of heaven. This is happening, this is happening between chapter 2 and chapter 3 in Genesis. Ezekiel 28 verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. The serpent was probably the most beautiful creature in the garden. Probably was. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone is thy covering, the stars, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, the emerald, Carbuncle, gold, workmanship, thy tablets, so thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. This is a created being we're talking about. He is not eternal. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth like an angel that I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. I will devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the peoples shall be astonished at thee, and thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Revelation 12, verse 3. The devil gets kicked out of heaven. He's a created being. He gets kicked out between chapter 2 and chapter 3 in Genesis. Chronologically. That's when it happens. Uh, <clears throat> Revelation 12, <coughs> 3. Starting in 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. 
having seven, horn, seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. When, when Lucifer fell, he took one third of the angels with him. Fallen angels is what we're talking about. Uh, his tail grew the third part of the stars of heaven. He cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered, or to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his archangels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Job 1 7. Here's what he's doing now. Job 1 7. Maybe you've bucked into him. You've seen him somewhere. Yeah. It's not your mate. Let me go ahead and tell you that. Right. Job 1 7, and the Lord said, Satan, whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Also, 1 Peter 5 8 and 9, here's what we're supposed to do with the book. 1 Peter 5 <coughs> 8 and 9. <clears throat> Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist? Now we're going to see the problem here in a little bit. Eve did not resist, she debated. Yeah. Need to resist. Resist. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brother that are in the world. Revelation, maybe someone else wants to read this. 20 verse 10. Someone should delight to read in this. Who wants it? No fussing, no fighting. Go ahead. How about one more time, real loud, Sister Lynn? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Real soon, it's going to happen. How about verse 15, Sister Linda? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Same day, everyone that doesn't have Jesus in their heart is going to be there with the dead. Right. Need to accept Christ in this lifetime. <laughs> Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting life. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for man, but man that rejects Christ and says, No God, I won't have part of what you got for me. Then they must go there too. They must go there too. Well, that's, uh, that's what happened between chapter 2 and chapter 3. Sin that did not begin on earth. It started in heaven. But planet Earth has been invaded from outer space. Sin entered the garden full blown. Full grown. Is introduced by the serpent. Here he appears for the first time in chapter 3. He disappears three chapters from the end. And everything in the middle shows his destruction. Right, right. What havoc he's been wreaking on man and on the earth. It says that he's subtle. That means wise. That means wise. But his wisdom is warped. That's right. I wouldn't be caught up with his crap. And that's just about as long as I would study. A wise man told me one time, don't ever study him. Right. I wouldn't get into no studies like that. That's just about as much as we want to give him about 10 minutes. I really hate to mention his name. Right. right. Yeah. right. But there it happened. Okay, now, 
starting in chapter 3, uh, old heads that had this class before, that had this class before about eight years ago, if you could just kind of hold back right now, we'll play a game here in chapter 3. And if you've never had this class before, you're invited to play. Uh, Brother Dennis, would you help me, like I said, you come up here and kind of watch, see who raises their hand first. Well, I'm going to read chapter 3, and we're watching for a key word that's in chapter 3 17 times. See if you can pick it out. And uh, Brother Dennis, if someone raises their hand, you stop me. And we won't penalize you for guessing. We're having fun. This is the Lord's house. Go ahead right. and guess. Right. It doesn't matter. We're not going to laugh at you. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day... You got one? Okay, what is it, Philip? Half said. Mm, sorry, God. Sorry. Tree. Tree. Sorry. Keep watching, Brother Dennis. Y'all are doing good. I'm on verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Correct, eat. The word eats in here 17 times. That's my problem, and that's your problem. <laughs> has been ever since. We'll just go ahead and thank you, Dennis. We'll go ahead and tell you the truth. Adam and Eve ate yourself out of house and home. Yeah. <laughs> we don't watch. We will, too. We will, too. Uh, we went up on the river the other day, and uh, Brother Garth, he didn't tell me about it. He's going to bring ranks. He started telling me about it back here in the office. And as soon as he started telling me, I could smell it. Yeah. I could smell it in the office, but we got to. Then every once in a while, he'd pull them up out of the cooler. He just had one bag, preacher. I thought he had one. He just had one of them. Yeah. Like a Ziploc bag. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he teased me every once in a while. He'd pull them out and say, when are we going to have those little ones? He said, oh, I don't know, tomorrow or something. And then one day, he pulled them out there one evening, and he said, uh, this is too many. Those campers over there, they probably need some. I'm going to go over and ask them. Do they want some of them? I said, no, you're not. <laughs> it's, it's like a pie. I don't know why you cut them in half. Why would you have up one? It's just one bag of ranch. But, yeah, I, uh, we, ate, we just about ate ourselves out of house and home. Adam and Eve ate themselves out of house and home 17 times. That's a problem here in chapter 3. It's yeah. the word eat. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Uh, Sister Linda, thank you for helping us out there. I'm on verse 7 now. And let's see the rest. Uh, if you wanted to see the word, here it is in verse 1 there at the end, you shall not eat of every tree. Verse 2, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. Eve said, verse 5, God doth know in the day that you eat thereof. Verse 6, if it's the end twice and did eat and gave unto her husband and he did eat. Verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Of the day. Have you ever heard a voice walk? That's what's happening right here. The voice of the Lord is walking. Walking. He's walking around. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence. Maybe you've done that. I've hid myself from the presence before. Sure. From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said to him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. You know, he never was afraid before. Right. Why was he afraid? Now? 
Para, para dentro da igreja e a sim. 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 Because we're kin to our grandparents. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Danny Lang said, That sermon, who told thee? Hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman. That's the problem. The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The servant. Passing the buck. Passing the buck. That's what we do. Pass the buck. It's the serpent that beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Go ahead and tell you right now, back then the serpent might have looked like a cat. We'll get verses on that later. But uh, after Betsy, he's going to get cursed, he's going to crawl on his belly. We'll see. Above all the beasts of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat. All the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Yes. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Yes. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. What he said is, Adam, you're going to die. Yeah. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, no good and evil. And now lest we put forth, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. We're talking about the corruption of all things. It's chapters 3 through 5. It didn't take Adam and Eve very long to take care of it. It didn't take man very long to take care of it. And I'll go ahead and tell you that if I would have been Adam, I would have done the same thing. And True. you would have too. That's how we are. That's how we are. Adam was a man without mother or father. Eve was a woman without a mother. Christ was a man without a father. But all other humans have both. A father and a mother. A father and a mother. Now, uh, this subtle, in, back in verse 1 now, we're in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The subtle is cunning, crafty, tricky, wise, we already said. But it's a warped kind of wisdom that this bird has here. And apparently... Adam and Eve, see, are talking with the serpent. And apparently back then they could. It happened yeah. other times in the Bible, like when they would talk to his dog, you know. But probably in the garden, I don't like to probably very much when I'm up here, but probably they could talk with the animals. It didn't seem very strange to them, right? She was talking to the serpent, and it didn't seem strange to them. Right. 
And that was before the fall. Uh, now, this is a very big point here in verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, let me ask you something. What did Adam and Eve already know? Good. All they knew was the good. And that's the way God wants you and me to be. Now, after they ate of the fruit, now they know two things. Before, they just knew one thing, and it was all good. It's a sad story, but in chapter 3, there's a big fall. Now, Adam and Eve knows two things. And the, what they know now is evil. The, they should have listened to God. Rick should listen to God. God wanted Adam to know the good, what the good is, and what the evil what would have been. God wanted Adam and Eve to know what the good is and what the evil would have been. But instead, now, Adam knows what the evil is and what the good could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, me and you're in the same boat. Right. If we just start from this day forward. Right, right. God wants us to know, all of us, everybody in here, from this day forward, what the good is and what the evil could have been. Now, here's how you learn what the evil could have been. It's right here. Yep. You watch somebody else's example. You listen to what the preacher says. Listen to what the Word of God says. And I don't have to eat of that tree if I read that it turned out bad for right. Adam and Eve. Right. If I read and see it turned out bad for somebody else, I don't have to experience that for myself. Right, right, right. And I can learn what the evil would have been and experience what the good is. Yeah, yeah. If I listen. If yeah. I listen. It's a very big point. Don't skip over or brush it off. Man. See, the trouble with experience being the best teacher. Is the tuition is too expensive. <laughs> we need to learn yeah. from somebody else's example yep. what not to do, what to do and what not to do. I don't have to learn everything on my own. Like a, I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. <clears throat> I can watch somebody else and see what to do and what not to do. I can watch Adam and Eve and learn. Yeah, sure. I need to listen to God. Obey God. See, they should have recognized evil from the summit of the good. They were in the perfect environment. But instead, they recognized good from the pit of evil. Yeah, 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 you're right. Hey. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. That's right. We don't want to do that. We, today's the first day of the rest of our lives. Amen. We can start right now and learn from other examples Amen. what not to do. Right. And maybe what to do. Sure. Sometimes. Sometimes. Let's look at it in Romans 16, 19. And I don't know if I can overemphasize this point. I don't think I can. Especially for you parents. <coughs> Romans 16, 19. I mean, it's got... I'm not talking about it. For, Go ahead, brother. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet, I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And listen, this is God's command to all of us today. He wants God's perfect will is for Rick to be wise unto <laughs> that which is good. <laughs> And simple concerning evil. I don't need to know about it. I don't need all of it to know all the whys and wherefores. And I don't need to know about the dotting the I and crossing the T 
of evil and everything right. everybody tells me that I need to be into. Right. Look, there's absolutely no reason to have sex education class. Amen. It only makes, it only causes curiosity. And right. then after the class, they want to explore. Right. 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 I would have you to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. All young people need to understand is no. That's right. Amen. They right. don't need a class. Yeah. I should have got before I came. I was just thinking about this morning. But it hadn't been just about 20 years ago, Mountain State Baptist Church, a little more maybe, realized that uh, the first graders in Nicholas County were required to take sex education classes. Big stick. They had to have it. Had to know it. Big stick about it. It finally blew over like we let everything do. You know? And uh, you go back and check the numbers and see if we're better off since we started the class or before. When was there bigger problems? When was there more pregnancies? When was there more? Before the class or after the class? Go back and check the years. Okay, right. It's what God says. Yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. I don't need, your young people don't need everything explained. Right, right. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. You could explain this to them. No. Amen. Amen, brother. Yes. That's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. Good preaching. You're doing all right. All you've got to know is when some mean old boy does something he's not supposed to, you take your shoe off and hit him upside the head. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You say no. Amen. That's Amen. all you got to know. That's sex education class right there. Amen. That's, that's the way God said, look, I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Look, there's absolutely no reason in this world to have drug education class. It causes curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat is it killed you and me too. Romans 16, 19. I would have you wise. He's talking to you. He's talking to the Seeker Sunday School class this morning. I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Don't overlook it. Don't brush it off. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Check out, see if the drug problem is worse before the years before we had drug education classes or after. You check it out. You check it out. I didn't, uh, I've neglected it. You check it out. You tell me if it caused that culture to blossom and bloom or if it died out as soon as we had drug education classes. Which way did it go? Huh? Simple. Simple concerning evil. Wise that which is good. Genesis 3, 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now look. Every man, woman, boy, girl, child born in the world is a rebel. The whole human race is in a state of rebellion against God. Right. Right. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, we read a while ago, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. But instead of that, what man does is dress himself. Yeah. He's told to dress the garden, but he dresses himself, trying to cover up and hide. You're right. Man. Instead of doing what God said. You're right. Yeah. The whole human race is in a state of rebellion. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that 
they would make it. Our first parents, as wise as they were, did not know this, that they knew enough. Do you know it this morning that you know enough already? There's some things you don't need to know. There's things I don't need to know. As wise as they were, they didn't know that they knew enough. That they knew enough. But now they know more. They know Now they know good and evil. Before they only knew good. Right. <coughs> this dressing of themselves, this is religion. It's an attempt, an attempt to close ourselves apart from God. This right. is man-made what they did. It was all man-made. Yeah. And a little bit, God's going to provide salvation down through this. But right now, we've got man trying to cover up his sin. Yeah. And the blanket's too short and the bed's too wide to cover up. It's not going to work out. Today, man tries education, baptism, confirmation, good works, church membership. Let's check them out. Psalm 41 9 on this side. Psalm 41 9. John 13 18 over here. Psalm 41 9. John 13 18. This is going to go to verse 15. Hold it right there, Sister Lindsay, one minute. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is between the serpent and the woman. Enmity is hate. There's going to be hate between the serpent and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. Now, a woman doesn't have a seed. Right. A woman has an egg. Right. Amen. This time she does. The, on the first Christmas when the Holy Spirit plants the seed there and that's God in the flesh, God with us that's born and there's hate between the serpent and Jesus, the seed of the woman and it shall bruise thy head, it being the seed of the woman, the Lord Jesus Christ bruises the serpent's head on Calvary. And all he gets done is to bruise the Lord's heel. Calvary. It's hardly nothing compared to what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Then uh, John 13, 18. Who's got that? John 13, 18. I'll read it again one more time, Sister Lindsay. I think I told you to hold it. Uh, here's 15. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In Psalms. Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath blessed me with good things. And then John 13, 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath blessed me with good things. The serpent hates the Savior. There's hate between them, a contention. Verse uh, 17 here, Genesis 3, 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. See, God curses the ground. He curses the soil. He curses the serpent. He curses Satan. But He does not curse Adam or man or there'd be no hope for us. There'd be no hope. Right. He made a way in the middle of all this. I have to quit. I'm sorry. Dear God, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for writing it down. Thank You for Jesus. Thank You for the Bible. Thank You that you're the winner, and we're on the winning side. Thank you for Sundays. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for light. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.